Here's what we're talking about today on Daily Blast Live. Cult classic filmmaker Kevin Smith will be live in our studio. He's telling us all about Clerks 3, his friendship with Ben Affleck, and being a guest at Ben and JLo's wedding. More women come forward, accusing Adam Levine of sending inappropriate text messages, while other celebrities sound off on the drama. I don't understand why we continue to blame women for men's mistakes. Communication and confidence coach Karen Donaldson will be here live to break down why women apologize more than men. And Mary Lou Henner is back on the panel live as our special guest co-host. Oh my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Y'all, y'all, y- y- just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Good morning. Good morning. I guess it depends where you're at. Right now, it feels like that uh, some of us just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> and some of us, is that you? <laughs> no, but I know she did. I was late. I was late waking up. I'm a little off today. I just want to let everyone know. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. 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 Yeah. Well, honey, you got those earrings on. If you can't hide it, decorate it. Yes. Amen. That's Thank you, MH. Thank you. A, that is a great point. It is. And uh, also, if you haven't noticed, we got Mary Lou Henner, our special guest. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I love that we get to have these conversations with you because we're all learning a lot from you. I overheard you discussing with our producers yesterday something that you, I don't know if you came up with this term. I want you to elaborate on it. It's called selective, this is what I heard, selective spouse hearing. Right. What is this? Well, I spent the weekend with my husband, his siblings, their spouses, and it was so amazing to watch. It was a big family reunion weekend, and it was amazing to watch how one spouse would say to another something, and the spouse would kind of ignore it, and then a sister-in-law or brother-in-law would say something, and they'd like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll go do that. And it was like, wait, she just, your wife just said that. Oh, you know, what? And we started talking about it, and my sister-in-law, Wendover Brown, who's married to my husband's identical twin, Mark, she said, yes, that's called selective spouse hearing. And, you know, it's like the way the kids block out their parents right. or the teachers in the Peanuts cartoon or the grown-ups. Right. You know, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right. but, uh, After a while, you can't hear what your spouse is saying. We can all relate. Well, I feel yes. like that's a problem, though, Mary Lou, because oh. if, you're, if you're a person that says, I'm pretty sure my spouse is tuning me out, okay, if you remind them, well, now you're nagging. Uh, so yeah. how oh. do you, what, what, how do we navigate? Oh my gosh, you are so correct. In Women are more auditory. I know this from my memory work. Men are more visual. And so what happens is he said, you know, she says, he never hears anything that I say. And he says, she's just standing there doing mm, this all yep. the time. And that's how they perceive it, like it's nagging. Right. But then somebody else will say, you know, your posture's a little bad. You should, it's like, yeah, I should probably do that. Or, you, you know, you could, you're getting a little of a dad bod. Somebody else can say, not the wife, you know. So it's selective spousal hearing. <laughs> that's what happens. It's the, the dynamic. Have you ever been guilty of this? Oh, in both directions. Okay. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Sometimes I walk around and I think flaps up. And you <laughs> <laughs> You close your ears. <laughs> but that'd be good. It's just like you could just tell your p- partner, like, like you know, football Sunday. You could be like, hey, Jordan, I'm sorry. Flaps up from one to four. And you Absolutely. can watch your games and then flaps down and then you do whatever she needs. And then, like, maybe That's you right. just have a little schedule. Navigate. You have to communicate with your. You know what it reminds me of? Uh, do you know the, the show Damn Yankees? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so the Lola. opening number is, you know, six months out of every year. You know, I might as well be made of stone because they've got, you know, the baseball going. So, yeah, football Sunday season as well. Flaps. That block. Flaps. Flaps. Yeah, that I would use that. That's a hat but a different reason. Oh, okay. yeah, right. That would, wow. not, that would not go great in my house. With Jordan, no. no. Hey, can I talk to you? Flaps up till the game's <laughs> over. Yeah, I, I don't know. But well, let me play devil's advocate, Mary Lou. Sure. Is it ever okay to have selective hearing? Because I got to be honest, I do sometimes. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's a fact of life. Or so, so you're going to deal with Whatever it. you call it. Spouse yeah. hearing? Yeah, yeah spouse yeah, hearing. Like, yeah. yeah, selective spousal hearing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My second husband had road rage. And if I didn't do flaps up during every drive we took together, wow. we would have killed each other instead of just getting divorced. <laughs> <You know? laughs> We're great friends now, but... He was hard to drive Okay, with. so then tell us some of your tips and tricks besides flaps up. Uh, like, well, for communication. Communication. That, you know, that's ho- always the key to everything. It's like yesterday when we were talking about sex, I felt like, oh, maybe I didn't say enough about what you're supposed to do yeah. to get over that. You know, if your thermostats are the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, it's like, 
like that line from well, Chicago. Well, I love you, honey. I love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if your thermostats are similar, then everything's going to be okay, especially even if you're going through a dry spell. But if it's not, then you have to bring something to the party or at least be patient or communication. It's all about communication in marriage. Yeah, because just, it otherwise, like you'll kill each other. It's yeah. hard to talk <laughs> about that stuff, though. I know. Yeah. Ooh, hey, it's so I more we have like Mary Lou's out there, yeah. like, destigmatizing it. I think mm -hmm. you have to. Yes, you're gonna help a lot of relationships out there, mm -hmm. Mary Lou. Maybe you should have like a relationship advice show oh, podcast. Anytime, I'm you know I'm always available. Oh, that'd be a good podcast. Down. Flaps down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry. All right, no, we sure. do have another story for you. A New York weatherman has found himself the center of his own personal storm. Meteorologist Eric Adam was fired from his job after someone sent nude photos of him to his boss and his mother. According to a post by the weatherman, someone took screenshots from an adult website and or webcam site that appeared uh, that he appeared on voluntarily. So Adam explained that he had engaged in quote unquote compulsive behavior inappropriate for a public figure and is seeking professional help. Now we're hearing that the weatherman has been getting job offers, even turning one down. His rep said he's been overwhelmed by the support he's received. But the question that I want to pose to you all, should he have even been fired in the first place? And would you hire someone um, in this situation? Uh, I, I, I understand why they fired him. I would hire somebody that this has happened to. But I'm going to ask you guys, doesn't this make revenge porn an effective tactic because it works? This is revenge porn, it am is, I, totally. is it not? Well, yeah. we don't why know. Why would he be fired? I'm so confused here. Right, because he's a public figure and it appeared and it was sent to his boss and mother, they have a morality clause in their contract. Right. And because they think being consensual on a on outside of your business, that's so immoral, that's the problem. His face is tied to their business. But why is that immoral? But he didn't, okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding this. I feel like you're blaming the victim because he never took those photos. This was a private But he site. put him out there. But it was and still so, a private yeah, I know. Off business, correct. No, but you know, there are some companies that feel like it, it's a morality clause, as we already said, and that that's not their public policy, right. you know? Yeah. Which so, is, to me, somewhat unconstitutional because that's your private business. Are you saying anything I do for DBL outside, if I want to go do something consensual with my husband, I could get fired if someone else took a picture of it? Right. Not even, I, I didn't even want to put it out there? How is that Do fair? Do you think if you were a dancer late night that if somebody got pictures of that, that wouldn't affect DBL? Ooh. Oh, the lights just went down. Ooh. You're about to shut us that's down. Maybe I should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe you should. I Come think in. that's because this a celebrity <laughs> just walked Come in. Come on, DBL. You guys have got movie during the Kevin Smith in the studio yes. live. Yeah. Shut the lights yeah. off on us. You don't want to miss it. Wow. Yeah, Closed captioning provided by Posh. On August 31st, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized an updated booster shot for COVID-19 that also protects against most prominent subvariants of Omicron. People on social media criticized the decision because they said vaccine makers only tested the boosters on mice. Verified viewer Brian emailed us to ask if the new boosters weren't tested on humans. So Brian, let's verify. Were the updated Omicron booster shots tested on mice, not humans, before they were authorized? Our sources are the FDA, vaccine makers Pfizer and Moderna, and Jennifer Pancorbo with North Carolina State University's Biomanufacturing Training and Education Center. When a vaccine is first developed, it undergoes rigorous testing and human clinical trials before it's authorized for use, as we saw with the original COVID-19 vaccine. This is because vaccine makers are creating something new and they need to prove the delivery system or method of how your body learns to protect itself is safe and effective. When a vaccine requires updating, manufacturers use the same delivery service. They just tweak what it's teaching the body. Everything else in that construct that we're using to vaccinate people is exactly the same over and over and over and over. These updates don't require lengthy human trials because vaccine makers do test them on animals to make sure they're effective. We see this every year when a new flu vaccine is released. It's only tested on animals because it's similar to previous versions. 
In the case of the new COVID-19 boosters, manufacturers were conducting human trials on an Omicron booster before the BA4 and 5 subvariants appeared. The FDA directed vaccine makers to also add protection against those strains too, since they're now the most prevalent variants. The vaccine makers then tested the updated boosters on mice to confirm it works. So yes, the updated Omicron booster shots were tested on mice, not humans, before they were authorized. But this is very common among all vaccines when they're being updated and not created from scratch. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. He's a talented director, writer, and actor that, of course, you know from Clerks, Mall Rats, Dogma. He's currently on the road to tour his new movie, Clerks 3. Joining us now in studio, Kevin Smith. Yeah. 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 The top, go to a wide shot. I hate to correct, but that's what I do. You'll notice that I'm sitting lower. Why? I lowered Why? my chair for Why? that very reason. I don't want people looking at my crotch on television. <laughs> I watch this show and yeah. I see all of your crotches. Oh, that's what your OnlyFans is for. I don't want yeah. them looking at it. Okay, yeah. but we are trying to get ratings. Uh, yeah. I can see that, man, but you're not going to get off of my lack of junk. <laughs> Kids, I am, I just full disclosure, completely baked. Here in the board. Yeah. 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 Right. Of, of local weed, and I'm used to smoking California weed, and, and I'm Not very, me, but, all yeah. the time. I live in Mary Lou. Mary Lou lives but, above me. I was going to yeah, ask, what kind of neighbor right is Mary Lou? Can wave. She can uh, wait, literally wait, wait. If, Mary... if the earthquake happens, Mary Lou winds up in my pool. Does Mary yeah. Lou see smoke coming from <laughs> 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 Probably, probably. <laughs> I can take videos. I can watch their parties. I think your satellite dish is still on my property. Probably. From here, so yeah. I'm looking at Affleck satellite From Affleck, I know. You guys are happy neighbors. Like, is she a good neighbor? Like, do you like a chatty neighbor or do you like a chill neighbor? I've lived there for 20 years in February, and we finally met last year oh, as I was walking awesome. up the hill she was outside yeah. she was like hi Kevin I was like I know who you are you have the world's greatest memory <laughs> and I, quizzed her. I started quizzing her yeah. I was like what happened December 12th 1982 and she told me a bunch of stuff I couldn't 19... double check <laughs> so I felt December 12th 1982 was a Sunday See, just look at that is that insane? nuts oh, isn't that crazy know. somebody look it up though because yeah. she that does is... this all the time and nobody checks <laughs> Just be making it I never lie, like, I'm never wrong. You're there right. you go. I have to uh, ask you she's this. She's an honest, wonderful neighbor. Uh, very, very quiet and stuff. Yeah, quiet. Uh, very cool. What, the so only other time home. I saw you was I was. I, I always hike up past, yeah, uh, past where she past, lives, yeah. her driveway. So as I was hiking one day, I saw her in the middle of the street, looking like very concerned, oh. and she was in a rope. Oh and my I was gosh. like, well, "Hey, how are you doing?" And she goes, "Did you see?" A file of paperwork. My husband. My husband oh. left his his little leather case on top of the car and drove off. Oh, so so that's a that, toy move. That's the thing. He doesn't yeah. have the memory that she that's has. A, very true. So he, never he forgot found the thing it. and left it. Did Let you me, ever find yes. it? No, uh, unfortunately. Can I ask? Me? Yes. No. I have to ask you a question. You recently bought the movie theater. Yeah. This is like oh, a dream of mine. Like, but as uh, my hometown movie key, theater, yeah. where my father used to take me when I was a kid. And where I would go on, like with my high school girlfriend every Friday oh, nice. and stuff like that. So, so my cool. DNA is all over that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so black uh, that's why I had to buy it to clean it up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. There's an apartment above it, so I'm going to live there as well. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so oh. my like TV room is going to be one of that's five so theaters. Nice. We'll just plug in the phone and watch whatever Dang. we want. But the idea of like having a movie theater is kind of vanity for a filmmaker. You're like, oh my God, I make movies, so we put them in a movie theater. But I have ways to monetize a movie theater uh, that other movie theaters can't. For example, I just wrote a flick. We're going to shoot in the movie theater. Oh, smart. If you right. own a movie theater, make a movie th in the movie theater. Very meta. Movie. Very meta. We're going to do a <laughs> film school this summer. Aww. I've always felt like uh, movie theaters, like during the day, they're so empty at matinees. That's a good point. Stuff. You can use them. It's a, what is it if not a classroom? A bunch of chairs, big whiteboard at the, big, at the front. Sure. This guy. So we're going to do the Jay and Silent Bob film school, <gasps> teach people how to make Jay and Silent oh, Bob movies. Love and it. Uh, we're coming up. The first thing we're doing, like, it's just a way to do fun and games. We're doing uh, Hollywood Babylon, one of my live podcasts there. On, on October 8th. So are you moving here? Uh, to Denver? No, this yeah. is all in this New Jersey. This is all in Jersey. Oh, in New Jersey. Jersey. Oh, yeah. uh, but honestly, I, after last night in Boulder, I seriously considered... Denver's it's great. Oh, it's gorgeous My here. God. I was. I went into the theater. We were at the Boulder Theater, and we showed Clerks 3. I'm on tour with Clerks 3, folks. You can go see... Uh, look for tickets at Clerks3.movie. But anyway, <laughs> I was uh, there at the theater. Um, it was like going to a church where I was both the priest and Jesus at the same yeah. time. <laughs> they love oh, you. my God, they welcomed me so hardcore, man. I was like, I could live here in yeah. a big, bad way. Uh, Best gorgeous. reaction to the movie that we've had on the road outside of, like, the really? first screening in Jersey. Way to go, Boulder! Yeah. 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 Ye
yeah, yeah, that way. Yeah. And Denver, our show tomorrow night in Denver is like sold out. So that's like 1,800. So Colorado is a great place. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Where incredible. Yeah. Is. Well, yeah. I heard that you were a baby crying at Benefer's wedding. I did. I mean, yes. you guys are super I did. Close. I bawled like a man bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watching my friend get married to, to my other friend. Well, I mean, him I know better than her, but I know them both. We worked together right. years ago and stuff. And it was, you know, when, when somebody invites you to their wedding and, and you got to take two flights to get there and you have to wear special clothes. Yeah, right. Like, I go out of my way to wear whatever the hell I want in life. Somebody's like, you got to wear white. And I'm like, oh, man, I look terrible in white. I'm going to look like the State Puff Marshmallow Man. So <laughs> it was a pain in the ass. Once I got there, though, Everything was ameliorated because it was hands down one of like the five most breathtaking moments oh, I've really? ever experienced in my life. Like it, it truly, it was, a, it was a storybook love, and they stuck the landing with this like fantasy ending. It, it right. was beautiful, man. Like the kids Maybe. really do love each other. They loved each other back then and stuff, and they went and had separate lives and did everything. Right, right. And now have come back together and joined their lives. The way they included everybody and their family in the wedding, it was beautiful. Ben wrote this big speech that he read to her like in, during the reception. And I'm a huge uh, Ben Affleck fan, obviously. I've worked yeah. with him many times. <laughs> and I like him as a person, but I also like him as a writer because mm -hmm. he's very clever with the word of phrase and stuff, turn of phrase. And um, it, it was a long speech, but the whole time I was, Jennifer <laughs> was soaking it up is all about her and how wonderful she is. And I think the second person in the audience who was like this was me because I was like, oh, he's so clever. You rock, man. <laughs> He's yeah. spoken like a true director. That's yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, absolutely. He's like, stick <laughs> around because Kevin is not leaving us quite yet. When we no. come back, we're going to talk to him about his new movie, Clerks 3, so do not go away. And you becoming the mayor of Boulder. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm running. <laughs> Bring out, everybody. It's the latest trend going around social media. People cooking their chicken in cough or cold medicine. Videos on TikTok show people doing it. They're calling it sleepy chicken or NyQuil chicken. So is it safe to cook chicken with NyQuil? Let's verify. Now I consider myself a good cook and can tell you this isn't a good idea, but we went to the experts to get you answers. Our sources, family physician, Dr. Carla Robinson and the Mayo Clinic. These cold medications have many ingredients mixed in there. And so it's really hard to say what happens to the chemical composition of these uh, medications once they are boiled. One of these three active ingredients in NyQuil is a sedating antihistamine. According to the Mayo Clinic, that can cause drowsiness. Dr. Robinson says boiling the medication makes it more concentrated, which could be harmful to you. The thought is that if you are boiling the medication, that you could potentially um, boil away the water contents or the liquefying contents that help to dilute uh, the medication. Dr. Robinson says you should always be using medicine as it's stated on the label or how your doctor tells you to. There are guidelines as to how medication is supposed to be used and anytime you alter that you run the risk of either being exposed to higher than expected levels of the medication or maybe even rendering the medication ineffective. Dr. Robinson also wants to remind you that you should not be getting medical advice from the internet. These trends on TikTok are not proven to be safe. They are not um, proven therapies for sickness, for you know, a replacement for medication or anything like that. So we can verify that no, it is not safe to cook chicken or any other food for that matter with NyQuil or any other cold or cough medicine. With your verify, I'm Megan Pratt. I thought you could have made a cool movie. You're right. I'm living on borrowed time. No more watching movies. I'm gonna make a movie! What's the movie going to be about? It's about him working here. Meta. <laughs> okay, welcome back. That was a, cl a clip from Kevin Smith's new movie, Clerks 3, and he is with us in the studio to tell us all about it. Yeah. We're so happy. And, and I have questions, questions, Sam, because, you know, a lot of people that were in Clerks 2 are in Clerks 3, so mm -hmm. almost like the movie theater. Like, how nostalgic was it? Was it like this weird time warp? It was amazing. I mean, I, I, I kind of, I couldn't be surprised when we shot because, you know, I'm, I'm the ringmaster. I was the architect, so when it happens, I can't be like, how did the elephant get here? Right. I, put the elephant there. I bought it. That being said, like, when I was writing it, I was like, oh, I think this is going to be a meta experience for the cast. Um, I, I knew what to expect because I'd written it. There were moments when the cast were shooting 
where they were standing in the exact same places Whoa. that they had stood it's like 29 w. years ago and said the exact same things. It would be like going back to yeah. the taxi set yeah. and redoing a whole episode sure. 30 years later. Right. So periodically they would look at each other and be like, this is so weird. And I was like, this is how I live all the time. Yeah. Right. Like you're living in a stoner fantasy. We're folding <laughs> time in on it. So, so it was absolute bliss. And because we shot in Jersey, this is the first time we shot a movie entirely in Jersey since the first time, since wow. Clerks. So we were able to bring back people who had been in the first movie who nobody in the world would consider movie stars. But because they're in that flick, mm -hmm. sure. and because people have seen that flick for 29 it's, years, yes. they are more famous than Ben Affleck. Like Ben Affleck cameos in the movie and he gets a big reaction when he shows up. But there are people like my ex-girlfriend, Kim Lochran, who played like uh, 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 Heather Jones in the movie. She lives locally. If we'd shot oh. the movie in California, she I wouldn't would have flown been. her out or anything like that. But since we were there, I'm like, oh, roll down <laughs> and we'll put you in the foot. She didn't age a day. She <laughs> oh, looks amazing good. and stuff. And she's standing next to her, my friend Ernie O'Donnell, who also hasn't aged a day and stuff. And those two people in that moment in time, like in Hollywood, would mean nothing. In Clerks it means 3, a lot, they're yeah. as they're famous as anybody right, right. I've ever worked with. And it's, it's really lovely. It's all part of our childhood. Mm -hmm. It really yeah. is. Mm -hmm. um, I have to ask you, because you you're no Known to put personal pieces of your life in your movie. Yeah, that's now, all I do. I'm not very creative like you. Creative <laughs> people write and invent things. I just take my down. life and change names. No, yeah. though you did get kind of somber, or maybe it's not, when you put the heart attack yeah. in Clerks 3. Yeah. Tell us what that meant to you. Was it, it was hard watching it? Well, I mean, if you're going to make a Clerks 3, you got to approximate the formula that, uh, that we went out with Clerks, which was essentially I took my life and changed all the names. So it was close to my real life as, as possible. Um, I didn't do that in Clerks 2. Clerks 2 is, uh, I love that movie to death, but it's like fan fiction. I never worked at a fast food joint. I've never seen a donkey show, and there was never any threat I'd move to Florida. Clerks 3, especially now. Right. Clerks 3 is, um, I wanted to follow the same formula of the first movie, so I was like, let me strip mine my life again and just change everybody's names. So Randall has my heart attack. Um, Randall and Dante make the movie in the convenience store that I did like nearly 30 years ago. Uh, and they yeah, both still work at that store which I did when I was a kid so it plays more authentically or as authentically as the first movie I can't give you a boots on the ground retail experience like I did with clerks because I haven't worked in retail in nearly 30 years now I own a retail wow, establishment right. I've owned like Jane Saw and Bob's Secret Stash comic book store for like 25 years so if you know in the movie Randall says this job be great for work for the customers if I had an employee say to me like this job be great for work for the customer I was be like well then you're fired <laughs> yeah. so I went from clerk to like boss so I can't give you the boots on the ground retail experience but instead I could give you the authentic experience of my life and the near death thing right. felt like sure. it very was Bob Fosse too yeah completely Thank you. why yeah. why do you In say my that? Head, yes. the, why because Bob all Fosse. that jazz all exactly. that jazz the movie all yeah. that jazz yeah. is Bob Fosse doing sure. like his life story and stuff and Clerks 3 is a cl it's kind similar. of like yeah. that kind of well well done Mary Lou. Yeah. very yeah. nice yeah. Yes, and Tori tried to give you an audition I tried to do it yeah and Kevin you were all Fosse Kevin, it was so great having you in studio. Excellent what a treat to yeah, our viewers. Really Make sure to visit clerks3.movie to find a convenience tour stop near you. Also, That's Clerks so 3 will be available on digital October 14th. Ooh, coming up. Yeah, and available on DVD and on demand December 6th. We'll be right back. That was Thank you. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... The rates of violent crime against LGBTQ plus people are significantly higher than those who identify as straight. According to data from the National Crime Victimization Survey collected between 2017 and 2020. Two high profile cases involving LGBTQ victims include the 2015 murder of Daniel Spencer, a gay man in Austin, Texas, and Nikki Kuhnhausen, a trans teen who was killed in Washington state in 2019. In those cases, the gay trans panic defense was used. It focuses on the victim's sexual identity or orientation as an excuse for the crime. A tweet with hundreds of shares claims that the gay trans panic defense isn't banned in the overwhelming majority of states. So let's verify. Is the gay trans panic defense legal in a majority of states? Our sources are the LGBTQ plus bar, an association of lawyers and activists advocating for LGBTQ plus rights, the American Bar Association, Dr. W. Cardston Anderson, St. Edwards University criminal justice professor, and Paul Smith, professor at Georgetown University School of Law. Let's start by clearing up some terminology. 
The LGBTQ plus bar refers to the gay trans panic defense as the LGBTQ plus panic defense. When used as a standalone legal strategy, the LGBTQ plus panic defense argues that a victim's sexual orientation or gender identity or expression is to blame for a defendant's violent criminal action, including murder. That's not by itself something that the law says you're allowed to do. That's because committing a crime against a person because of their sexual orientation or identity is considered a hate crime. But what defense attorneys in some states can do is use a different defense, for example, provocation or self-defense, and argue that the victim's gender identity or sexual orientation is a reason why their client committed the crime. This is how the LGBTQ plus panic defense is primarily used in court. Criminal justice professor Dr. W. Cardston Anderson has studied LGBTQ plus panic defenses for nearly 20 years. Provocation is this idea that somehow it's so threatening so embarrassing, so humiliating, so dishonorable to have somebody make a pass at you that you kill them. And then uh, self-defense plays to these tropes that, that gay uh, or, or, or trans individuals are somehow more dangerous than everybody else. When used successfully in court, the LGBTQ plus bar says this legal strategy can get a murder charge reduced to manslaughter or justified homicide. What they're really trying to do is, is come up with a reason or a, an excuse to focus on the, the fact that this was a gay victim or a trans victim and, and appeal in that way to the homophobia or transphobia of the jury. In 2013, the American Bar Association called on federal, state, and local governments to prohibit the use of this defense. Since then, 15 states and Washington, D.C. have banned the LGBTQ plus defense, but it is still allowed at the federal level. So we can verify, yes, the LGBTQ plus panic defense is still legal in a majority of states and in federal cases. In 2021, a bill to ban the defense nationwide was introduced in the House and the Senate, but the bill was never voted on. With your verify, I'm Ariane Date Till. Welcome back to DBL. We love sharing your comments. Okay, so S Purpose says, I wish Mary Lou was going to be on the panel on my birthday so I could ask her about what was going on on that day. And I don't even know what her birthday is. S. Oh. Well, she should have sent it to you. Yes, send it. Let us know. Right. Her birthday yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Yes, okay. sent it. I knew. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I just left it. I was like, Jeff will go. Jeff, Jeff, will, Jeff get will get it. You'll yes. get that alley -oop. <laughs> no Please, everybody, ever, everybody sent it in. <laughs> no one can ever mess up on this show. No. They'll call you out. Ever. All right, I guess I can't no. read the comments. I don't now. know. I don't owe you a couple. <laughs> yeah, you do. You've been ribbing me the last couple. <laughs> oh, oh, you're such an easy target, though. Come on. <laughs> you're so basic. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> The sweetest way. Okay. Look at Bert no. got up. Bert got up and walked over. I got it. I got it. No, I got it. You're leaving. You can watch the second half of the show online. Watch our YouTube, dailyblastlive.com, or our app. But if you get the second half of the show, you got to stay tuned. Lots to talk about. <laughs> This was a post that's in the next door app. A woman wrote, I am so tempted to buy some speed bumps from Amazon and put them in Barrowick Commons Parkway. People fly down this road and it makes me so angry. So the question, can you put your own speed bumps on a public road? Let's verify. Our sources, the city of Charlotte, the Department of Transportation and attorney Gary Monty, partner at Monty PLLC. Berwick Commons Parkway is a city road. When we emailed the city of Charlotte, they told us there are rules in place and transportation projects are prioritized through capital bonds. They went on to say the city does not allow residents to fund projects like speed bumps directly. NCDOT also told us on state maintained roads, speed bumps have to be installed through an encroachment agreement. The request must go through an HOA or municipality. A single homeowner would not be able to obtain an encroachment. NCDOT says they have the right to remove a speed bump installed on a state road if it was not approved. They would be um, violating the state law. You're not allowed to put things in the in the middle of the road as a private citizen. Monty says people can also be held responsible if they place something in the road and someone gets into an accident. God forbid there was a, a car wreck or a motorcycle accident because you had put something in the middle of the road. 
then certainly you could be sued uh, for the harm that you've done for to that individual. However, if it is your private property, Monty says you are allowed to do whatever you want with your road. So we can verify that, no, you are not allowed to put your own speed bump on a city, state, or county road. With your Verified, I'm Megan Brack. This is Daily Blast Live. Oh, my gosh. Get real. No. No. Nope. Just stop. This is a <laughs> sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. We have Mary Lou Henner. Ooh, the yes, we do all week. Love having her here. Okay, we got to get to this because more women are coming forward accusing Adam Levine of sending them inappropriate text messages. So Adam has been accused of cheating and sending flirtatious messages to an Instagram model. He admitted to using poor judgment and crossing the line, but denied having an affair. Meantime, two other women claim Adam sent them flirtatious messages. When one called him out for being married, Adam allegedly told her it was a bit complicated. Adam and his pregnant wife, Beati Prinsloo, were spotted together picking up their children from school, but some stars are speaking out about the scandal. Selling Sunsets, Chriselle Staus took issue with Adam, saying that he and his wife will, quote, get through it together. She tweeted, when apologizing for cheating publicly, I hate the, quote, we will get through it together part from a man. Don't speak for her. You've done enough. And model Emily Ratajkowski blasted people online blaming the other woman for Adam's alleged cheating. Watch. I don't understand why we continue to blame women for men's mistakes especially when you're talking about 20 something year old women dealing with men in positions of power who are twice their age. The power dynamic is so skewed, it's ridiculous. If you're the one in a relationship, you're the one who's obligated to be loyal. So the whole other woman like they're to blame, that's bad and it's literally designed to keep women apart. Okay, what do you think, Jeff? I thought we were talking about women. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of her response? Um, I, don't, I don't think anyone should chime in, right? We're on a talk show, we talk about these events, but I wouldn't in my off time make a video about something that happened with Britney Spears or Adam Levine. I wouldn't do that. I, yeah. I get paid to do that. I don't know why people need to chime in. The guy's in enough trouble, right? Yeah. If everything's true that he's going through and that's the end of the story, I mean, he's in enough hot water. You don't need to pile on and... It, it, I don't want to get away from what's going on, but I can't help but think you kind of want your name in the press mm -hmm. as well. And she's got it in recently because of her cheating. You know, her right. Justin Hartley cheated on yeah. her. Oh, well, no, that's Griselle. Right. You're talking about Emily. Yes, yeah, both, both. Both, yeah, yeah, yeah both. both of them, yeah. you're right. I just think it's like they wanted to jump on that publicity train. woo, -woo! You know what I mean? It's a little much. But I will say there's a pattern of Adam Levine that we should have seen coming. Listen to this. This is in 2009. He told Cosmopolitan this. Um, Instinctively, monogamy is not in our genetic makeup. People cheat. I've cheated. And you know what? There's nothing worse than the feeling of doing it. I would say the person getting cheated on feels worse. But I'm just saying he clearly has an issue here. And he clearly, whether or not he's having an affair, why do it on DMs? The, uh, we can all see it. Why not do a pay phone waiting? Mm. Oh. That's, yeah. that's, it's a that's song. A song. Yeah. It's a song. Thanks, Thanks Marilyn. Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Marilyn. Yeah. <laughs> Get me in trouble. Oh, I'm thinking. Mary Lou. Yeah. You know, you I, he, he, as, I, as I listen to this, I feel like we're having two different conversations. One is what you're talking about, Jeff, the more public conversation about, you know, should you be chiming? in everybody kind of deals with these issues but on a personal level with Adam and how I feel like it relates to everybody no matter how you identify is he's he seems like a person like most of us that was unable to have a very difficult conversation with himself and then his partner because when they talk about Millennials and everybody getting married later it's because people are realizing I'm not ready to be monogamous yet right. or I don't ever want to be monogamous or my partner's fine with having a closed open, relationship right. on their and end and I'm know open what up. goes on behind closed doors right. or what's the agreement with a couple. Right. So just talk you about know. it. It's super awkward. It's it's because most people d default to like, hey, me and Sam are together and this is weird. This is us. But I think the harder conversation is what does that look like? What are your fishing trips look like? Mm -hmm. Do I not want to hear about it? Is Do it I only right? want to hear about it? All these things that are kind of weird because we, we're very weird about sex in this country. If we can just start having these conversations, we'll do a lot less of these stories. I think that in my opinion, you know, pretty early on whether or not your partner is 
going to propose, let's say, a, um, a polyamorous relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't think, this is me speculating, that was the case here. Right. He no, said he not crossed at all, a line. Not at all. Right. So, no. yeah, exactly. So, if he would have came out and said, listen, we have an arrangement, or maybe he just wouldn't have said anything at all, I don't know. But I don't want to over explain simply being loyal and a truthful jerk. and faithful. Like, that to me, comes with given. any marriage, yeah. comes with, like, I don't think you need to sit well, down and have those it conversations. Should it right. should come with right, any right. marriage, yeah. but it doesn't always come in a marriage. But he has to be you truthful know. to himself first. Yeah. He has to say, this well, is the, what I want, not the default of what my grandparents did or my he parents. He should have known that sure. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Well, I mean, ago, if she read the article from 2009, 2009 was saying before this. he was married. Right. You know, so you know what you're... I agree with you. It's sad. Listen, I At the end of this, he's just cheating. he's just being a jerk. Yeah. Let's just let, let's simplify it. He's yeah. being a jerk. Yeah, I can't imagine if I was in her shoes. I'll just say that. But what is cheating? You know, we'd have to like define what we consider cheating. Well, she claims because, physical. Yeah. He claims not flirtatious. Right. That right. would be an emotional cheating for me. That would hurt just as much sure. for me. Me too. Yeah, I could see the emotional being worse. So just because when you, when you look at the text messages, it's the plotting behind your back that would the get The betrayal. Me. It wouldn't be like right. when they got to the hotel and I can assume what happened. It would be the, I'd be thinking, oh, I was picking the kids up when this happened. Can't. Oh, right. I think it's the, it, I think it's the emotional that I, uh, is almost seen worse, even though the, the physical is what everybody talks about. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we were talking about this in the makeup room earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, was this the most shocking bachelorette, fin bachelorette finale Ever. While one of the two bachelorettes got happily engaged, the other one got cheated on. So Rachel's last man standing, Tino, got down on one knee and proposed, but the happiness was short-lived after the show because Tino confessed to kissing another woman. Here's how it all went down. Rachel, I do love you. Mm -hmm. And that's why I had to tell you. You had to tell me or I forced it out of you and then immediately after you said, I wish I never told you. I was panicked, Rachel. I thought I was gonna lose you. This is such a big deal for me. I wanted to do this one time. Then don't I'm give up. Done. Then don't give up. I'm done. Whoa, in true Bachelor fashion, during the live show, Rachel's first runner-up, uh, Avon, showed up and asked her out on a date right in front of Tina. Tina! <laughs> Thinking. It's crazy. Okay. All right. I may be very unpopular in this, but I think that Rachel is a classic daddy's girl, and daddy's girls always write a script. And when mm. the partner doesn't follow the script, they're immediately X'd out. Like a fairy tale and script? That's it. Like whatever. And I think that they were doomed from the beginning because you could see their communication styles were completely different. And even though there was an incredible attraction, he got the first impression, Rose, and he was always the number one person. And he's a very basic guy. <laughs> very simple. <laughs> you know. and, and, you know, he looks just like Trudeau. Yeah, you he know, So he'll probably have a career after this playing Trudeau in something. <laughs> and so, and so, anyway, so I think, I think that they both dodged a bullet. And her father wasn't happy, definitely, with with uh, Tino, but he really wasn't happy either with Avon. Mm. So, yeah, it was an interesting thing. He, she is definitely, in my opinion, after many years of therapy, she, I think that she's a real daddy's girl and she's going to have trouble being with somebody. Well, she's I think that's, free. that really affects almost everybody's relationship is when you're dealing with a partner that you connect with, but also they're trying to please their parents, please their mom. This is somebody that my dad would like for me to bring home. And whether you're attracted to him or not, you're trying to do that script to make it perfect for your parents and perfect. What do you? <laughs> I can't. Oh We're gonna I'm wait. Sorry. Just how you reference Chavin. I was like, what? Oh, I was just trying to. I had to make contact with someone. I thought no. I'd be looking past his head. No. Not you. I no. she referenced Chavin earlier <laughs> <laughs> about being basic. That sorry, really. I'm that really. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> So, I love you, Jack. I hope you know that. That's a totally backhanded compliment. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You can't be like, oh my God, you're so embarrassing. I love you. No, 
No. Is this what you you pausing after down? the third <laughs> gesture towards me being basic <laughs> and pointing it out and then saying I love you isn't I, a backhanded. I, I, I literally like a sibling relationship. Yeah. Though. Like I can do this because I consider you a sibling. That's why I'm laughing. You've made it to sibling status. Congrats. <laughs> you're in the friend zone, sibling zone, so you're safe. No affair. Yeah. No cheating. Oh, yeah. No kissing. Trust here. me. That's okay. uh, anything you want to say? Sorry. No. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? How sometimes guys are so simple and basic, and you just see them struggling, and they don't have the words. That's what I saw last night. Yeah. You know, and it's, she was like, she kept cutting him off, right. and I think she lost a lot of. Fan. You know, fans. Is it fans. kind of the pot calling the kettle black a little bit? She's mad yeah. someone made out. He made out with a girl. She made out with 30 guys That's on the true. show. She right. supposedly what are you so one, mad about? He supposedly had one kiss. So is that and we're during the time, and then it was weighing on him, so he had to tell her, and then all hell broke loose. Yeah, you but know? the kiss is bigger. Yeah. It's well, a plot. It wasn't in he, the rules. Be, it wasn't yeah, the rules. but he plotted to go to that bar. He plotted to meet her there. They had a couple oh, drinks. You know a lot about this. I'm yeah. just saying, like, it's the, it's the tiny know. little creepy steps. That's Are what makes me mad. Are you speaking from experience? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. Yeah. I know. We've all been. Listen. The we pot, are all human you beings. You know, hey, he who was without sin cast the first stone. That's right. I mean, I've been cheated on. I've cheated, you know, not in marriages, but yeah. I love well, your honesty. Yeah, that's important. Oh, I had my baby on national television, remember? I have no secrets. <laughs> My hus first husband cheated on me, and all I kept seven times by the time we had our first anniversary, and all I could think was, how did that, wait, I'm usually very uh, like, you know, knowledgeable, yeah. I'm like a detective. Did that kind of drive Tell you crazy what? thinking about how he did it? Yeah, I'll, yeah, 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 for sure. And but that's not why we broke up. But you we were really worked hard. But you were shocked. I was shocked that it, was, it had been so many times. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's another whole story because I did a movie and they put my co-star and I on the front page of the Inquirer and then it was really revealed that he was the one having an affair because oh, they took, you know, they took uh, lines from the movie and put us that they quoted us and it was like, those were so lines they made from the it movie. Look like you were the one having yeah. the affair. Completely. Ooh, not yeah. cool. Crazy. National Enquirer, not cool. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, communication and confidence coach Karen Donaldson will be here live. Yeah. There she is. We're talking all about why women say sorry more than men. I'm so sorry, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> this is Daily Blast Live. We have fiery debate. That's not true. Truth. Can I finish? We tell heartfelt stories. We're so emotional over here. We talk to the stars. Turn up the notch on that. Great research. DBL is all new every day. You can sit there tomorrow if you want. Which <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. Okay. All right. Oh, what a fun show. Uh, yeah, the whole cheating thing. I, I don't know, Sam. I don't know. It doesn't seem to, monogamy doesn't seem to work a lot for a lot of people. Listen, I understand that people have arrangements, all those things, fine. That wouldn't work in my relationship, but I feel like I would know early on if my partner was into perhaps or wanting to have, you know, is it polyamorous? Is that the yes. right word? So, but I, polyamorous is different than having different. Because polyamorous, it's like a relationship where everybody knows about each other. Like, oh, oh I'm gonna okay. go yeah. on a date with Dan, right. and you're like, have fun. Let me tell him I said hi. That's like polyamorous. Yeah, but yeah. I, I think some people just have like, they have open relationships where it's just like open on one end or the other. Like the the wife can do something that the husband can or the partner. <laughs> one can, one can't. What's and, the agreement? Yeah, you know? and What's that's it, how many people can have that conversation though? It would save so many. It would be bad for divorce lawyers, but you know, yeah. I've been doing stand up for twenty years, and like I meet people after shows, and they're like, you, so open. Me and my wife, we've been swingers for twenty three years. And right. Like, there's no shame in it, and that's why they that's why they've been together so long because they don't have to lie. Right. They're, it, it's like removing the one thing. But on the flip side, when I worked at Loveline, I would tell you we would have people call in. They would have a successful open relationship for a handful of years and then someone ends up getting hurt because right. someone in the relationship develops feelings for not there's the first, not the second, not the third, but maybe the 13th yeah. person that they bring in, there's feelings there. And right. that's where the difference is. It I know isn't some, some all people have a one, a one time rule. Right? Yeah. Brandon Lewis.
today I'm gonna to be counting how many times I say I'm sorry. Saying sorry for me is almost like a natural instinct. It's very automatic. I'm gonna guess that I say sorry about at least 15 times a day. Welcome back. Sorry doesn't seem to be the hardest word for women. In fact, we've been taught that it is the right thing to say since we were little. But what we were conditioned to do is not always what's best for us. Joining us today is communication and confidence coach Karen Donaldson. Yeah. 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 Thanks sorry, not sorry, me. right? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Karen. Uh, Karen, I wanted to uh, speak with you. I am someone who does this a lot, and I find this almost emotional to speak about, so I, I very much appreciate you coming out here. It's a fact that women apologize more than men. I just want to know why that is. Is it because men are more stubborn, or is there a sense that women have to make up for something? Because I certainly feel it. That's a really good question. And a lot of people believe that it's because men are more stubborn, but it's not true. Like a study has found that women apologize more because we actually have a lower threshold for what we think is actually offensive, where men have to have seen they've offended someone or have been addressed to actually offer an apology. And it, as you said, it comes back to how we were conditioned as girls. Yeah. Think about us on the playground, be nice, be accommodating, think about their feelings, be the peacemaker. And on the other side, men are just not conditioned like that, nor are they from a young age. So that's what it has to do with primarily. That's wow. so true. Doesn't feel so primal, huh? Yeah, and you almost, you become this people pleaser. And then you neglect yourself. Completely. Um, do you think apologizing ruins a woman's confidence subconsciously? Oh, that's a really good question. It actually does. Because when we say we're sorry, whether we realize it or not, we are, admitting that we're in the wrong for something. So we're going into a situation and we're already apologizing. And apologizing when we've done something wrong is actually a real strength, but compulsive, yeah. ongoing, overly apologizing actually undermines, number one, our authority. It eats at our self-confidence and our self-esteem, and it starts to become disempowering to us because we can't be confident and sorry at the same time. Which is it? So we need to pull back on it. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because I feel, and some of the people that I know, and even some of the people in my family who apologize the most, are really masking the fact that they are control freaks. They feel they're responsible for everything. Mm. So they think they're like, oh, I'm sorry for the weather. I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry mm. for that. Whatever. So it's almost like a layer in front, it's like a reaction formation, mm. you know, in, like in therapy, when you do the opposite of what you're really feeling. So you're apologizing, but you're really apologizing because you really think that you're the one in control of everything and can handle everything and maybe didn't handle everything. You know, because women, I think, tend to, they know how sensitive men are. They, they give so much to their boys and they know that they're gonna have a hard time in life. You know, like, oh, my boy, blah, blah, blah. And they know women are really gonna have a tough time. So they want their daughters to grow up strong and having to take a lot on. So these women grow up and feel like I'm supposed to be in charge of everything. I'm controlling everything. And I'm so sorry it's not working out on every level. What do you think about that? <laughs> oh, really good. I, I like what you shared there. It was, it was a lot, but it's so true. There's some people who come about it, and that is masking that controlling behavior. But on the opposite side, like I want to go back to women. For us, it's a, it can be habitual, right? We have been groomed to be inclusive in nature, and a part of that comes along with it. And we actually need to stop and pull back, and it comes down to self-awareness. Everyone can only take ownership for who they are, how they show up, and what they do. So there's a course of things. If women want to pull back and be more powerful and stand in their truth and be more confident, there's some things they have to do so they can actually stop it. We can only control ourselves, and that's what I want to focus on. Too. So how can women stop it then? How can we, what can we do so we don't say sorry as much? When it's not even our fault. Yeah. You know? Well, only apologize for the things that you're really responsible for. Well, what if I'm right? conditioned, like, I say it almost like a muscle memory. Like, it just comes out. Sorry Got for it. that. You know what I'm saying? Got it. It comes down to the first thing is this. It comes down to self-awareness. You can't change what you can't acknowledge. And so with the self-awareness, it doesn't happen by osmosis. So you've identified it, it, you've identified it, and you realize that I'm always saying sorry when I'm late. I'm always saying sorry when, you know, I send a text hours after someone said something. So a few things. The first thing is this. You want to practice being more direct. Eliminate the sorry and just say what you're saying. Mm. The second thing is this. You have to consider changing your vocabulary. So think about the occasions where you often say sorry, and you want to think of some ways to interrupt that pattern. And here's what I mean. Sometimes when we go in late, I find more women than men, we rush into the room or we walk into the room and say, I'm so sorry for being late. How about this? 
thanks for your patience. Mm -hmm. Or, I know I've spoken for a while, I've been speaking for a little bit, for too long, you know what, I'm so sorry. How about thanks for listening? So you wanna have some prepared phrases to Mm. say instead, and choose the silence instead of saying sorry before we speak. Because we have to stop apologizing for our voice, for sharing our opinion, and being in the same space as everyone else. Absolutely not, but we take ownership over that. Wow. Say thank you instead. Yes, yes. thank you, Jeff, for being so yeah. resilient to some yeah. of the digs. <laughs> Sometimes it's condescending, though, Karen, right? <laughs> oh, it can be. I'm, so... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But thank you for being a good sport. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Karen. We appreciate you. TVL Nation, you can helpful. take part in an online confidence boot camp with Karen. There's one for women and men. That's great. Visit KarenDonaldsonInc.com. We'll be right back. Are you suggesting I Thank take you. one? Oh, I'm in May. Sensitive takes it in. Suffer from pain? You're not alone. It's the latest trend going around social media, people cooking their chicken in cough or cold medicine. Videos on TikTok show people doing it. They're calling it sleepy chicken or NyQuil chicken. So is it safe to cook chicken with NyQuil? Let's verify. Now I consider myself a good cook and can tell you this isn't a good idea, but we went to the experts to get you answers. Our sources, family physician, Dr. Carla Robinson and the Mayo Clinic. These cold medications have many ingredients mixed in there. And so it's really hard to say what happens to the chemical composition of these uh, medications once they are boiled. One of these three active ingredients in NyQuil is a sedating antihistamine. According to the Mayo Clinic, that can cause drowsiness. Dr. Robinson says boiling the medication makes it more concentrated, which could be harmful to you. The thought is that if you are boiling the medication, that you could potentially um, boil away the water contents or the liquefying contents that help to dilute uh, the medication. Dr. Robinson says you should always be using medicine as it's stated on the label or how your doctor tells you to. There are guidelines as to how medication is supposed to be used and anytime you alter that you run the risk of either being exposed to higher than expected levels of the medication or maybe even rendering the medication ineffective. Dr. Robinson also wants to remind you that you should not be getting medical advice from the internet. These trends on TikTok are not proven to be safe. They are not um, proven therapies for sickness, for you know, a replacement for medication or anything like that. So we can verify that no, it is not safe to cook chicken or any other food for that matter with NyQuil or any other cold or cough medicine. With your ver- Welcome back. Fall is in the air and to protect your vehicle, you'll want to prepare it for the cold weather. That's today's auto alert sponsored by Ox Car Care. So after checking the obvious like your oil, fluid levels, tire tread and brakes, you'll also want to make sure you stock your car with gloves and a blanket, an ice scraper, first aid kit, jumper cables and a flashlight. Now in an emergency, you don't want to be stranded without them. Ox Car Care is dedicated to providing you with an amazing auto protection plan experience that works with your budget. If you're looking for better car care give them a call at 1-800-690-7547 we'll be right back promotional consideration is brought to you by this is exactly The rates of violent crime against LGBTQ plus people are significantly higher than those who identify as straight. According to data from the National Crime Victimization Survey collected between 2017 and 2020 Two high-profile cases involving LGBTQ victims include the 2015 murder of Daniel Spencer, a gay man in Austin, Texas, and Nikki Kuhnhausen, a trans teen who was killed in Washington State in 2019. In those cases, the gay trans panic defense was used. It focuses on the victim's sexual identity or orientation as an excuse for the crime. A tweet with hundreds of shares claims that the gay trans panic defense isn't banned in the overwhelming majority of states. So let's verify. Is the gay trans panic defense legal in a majority of states? Our sources are the LGBTQ plus bar, an association of lawyers and activists advocating for LGBTQ plus rights, the American Bar Association, Dr. W. Cardston Anderson, St. Edwards University criminal justice professor, and Paul Smith, professor at Georgetown University School of Law. Let's start by clearing up some terminology. 
The LGBTQ plus bar refers to the gay trans panic defense as the LGBTQ plus panic defense. When used as a standalone legal strategy, the LGBTQ plus panic defense argues that a victim's sexual orientation or gender identity or expression is to blame for a defendant's violent criminal action, including murder. That's not by itself something that the law says you're allowed to do. That's because committing a crime against a person because of their sexual orientation or identity is considered a hate crime. But what defense attorneys in some states can do is use a different defense, for example, provocation or self-defense, and argue that the victim's gender identity or sexual orientation is a reason why their client committed the crime. This is how the LGBTQ panic defense is primarily used in court. Criminal justice professor Dr. W. Cardston Anderson has studied LGBTQ plus panic defenses for nearly 20 years. Provocation is this idea that somehow it's so threatening, so embarrassing, so humiliating, so dishonorable to have somebody make a pass at you that you kill them. And then uh, self-defense plays to these tropes that, that gay uh, or, or, or trans individuals are somehow more dangerous than everybody else. When used successfully in court, the LGBTQ plus bar says this legal strategy can get a murder charge reduced to manslaughter or justified homicide. What they're really trying to do is, is come up with a reason or a, an excuse to focus on the, the fact that this was a gay victim or a trans victim and, and appeal in that way to the homophobia or transphobia of the jury. In 2013, the American Bar Association called on federal, state, and local governments to prohibit the use of this defense. Since then, 15 states and Washington, D.C. have banned the LGBTQ plus defense, but it is still allowed at the federal level. So we can verify, yes, the LGBTQ plus panic defense is still legal in a majority of states and in federal cases. In 2021, a bill to ban the defense nationwide was introduced in the House and the Senate, but the bill was never voted on. With your verify, I'm Ariane Day-Till. DBL, we're going behind the scenes of all your favorite classic TV shows with iconic director James Burroughs. He will be here live to talk about his time on Taxi, Cheers, Frasier, and Friends. Then, the creator of Everybody Loves Raymond, Phil Rosenthal, will also be here live. Will the cast come back together for a reunion? Mm, that's tomorrow, only on DBL. I took that question out. Ooh. So excited. I, I can't wait. Uh, we got some comments regarding, uh, in regard to saying I'm sorry. Lee says, I learned a long time ago, don't say you are sorry unless you did something wrong. Kendrick said, I needed to hear this truth about sorry. I use that word a lot, even when it's not my fault. And yeah. Kendrick, I would assume as a man, you brought up that point to us yeah. in the break. Yeah, I do as well. I'll just bump my knee. I say sorry a lot too. So I don't know if I'm not seeing the difference. I tell my children to apologize when something happens. So maybe I'm not seeing the difference, which is probably that. <laughs> sorry you're not seeing yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry I'm a man. I, think sometimes, and I don't know if we have time, but I'm just going to say quickly, sometimes I say sorry just to fill the silence too. Yeah. I feel a need to fill it and I, I'll do it and it had yeah. nothing to do with me. Or it moves the people on to the next yeah, thing. It's like, it's like you sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. I always say weird things to fill the silence <laughs> and then I get in my car afterwards and I'm like, wow. <laughs> Before we go, we got to give a big yes, DBL shout yes, out to our yes, senior supervising yes, producer, yes. Hunter. Birthday, Patty. Yes. We appreciate you. One of my we favorite love people. you. Love Ever. you, Patty. She's love a you, boss. Patty. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy 40th. <laughs>